Hello and welcome back to Berserker, and we're currently here right next to two armies that really want to deal damage to each other, and hopefully we're going to be able to assist our allies. Mr. Lek, as you can see, has his army and he's up against Ascaron, and we're going to see what we can do here. This combat strength is utterly fearsome at the moment, and if we can eliminate these guys, bear in mind, look at their composition. They have an absolutely fantastic composition, huge amounts of high tier units. They have legionaries, they have elites of all kinds, they have everything that they could possibly want, and that is the reason why their combat strength is so dramatically better than pretty much anything we have. But I'm now adding my 650 onto Lex 1250, and we're about to go in and see what we can do. Now, obviously, um, a couple of castles have been taken. I believe Kesar Castle was taken just moments ago. And hopefully we're going to be able to take a couple more of those things as well. Bear in mind, as I said in the previous episode, I'm not going to be showing all of the sieges or anything like that. I'm not going to be showing all the all the castle sieges at, at the very least. I might show some of the more interesting town sieges that we get into. But most of the time I'm just going to be taking those things off screen and uh, of course I'm going to be showing the um, the more well <laughs> slightly uh, well daunting battles because let's face it those are the ones that are usually the most enjoyable and uh, satisfying when we do end up winning of course they are also somewhat well problematic if we end up losing. Ah, oh, there's a lot of people. Oh, I just killed Nikasaur. I actually did not kill him, but, you know, we, we eliminated him, which is pretty nice. Anyway, let's just see if I can do as much damage as possible here. Unfortunately, um, actually, should I say fortunately? Fortunately, we do have some rather nice uh, throne weapons here, and my forces are able to use them to good effect. Wow, that was a nice hit, if I do say so myself. That was another nice hit in the, in the face, no less. In the face to that guy. And one of the main issues, by the way, with thrown weapons, which you probably already know about, but I'm going to say it anyway. But one of the main issues, you know what it is? Well, it's being able to be blocked, basically. If you are blocked for any reason, then obviously you're going to, well, do zero damage. But with that new ability that we have, I think it's called ballistics or something like that. I'm actually not entirely sure what it's called, but... Generally, it's that thing that allows the javelins that you're using to penetrate enemy shields. And that is just incredible. That's one of the best perks I've ever seen. Because it basically makes your thrown weapons into an almost guaranteed kill every single time you wind up a throw. And in my opinion, that is probably more impactful than pretty much any other perk. With the exception of obviously those ones that are all the way at the very end of the of the tree. And I'm talking about things like everything has a price and the athletic skill to increase your um, to increase your HP. You know, every single time every single time you gain a, a couple of uh, skill points in athletics, you're going to gain huge amounts of HP and everything. Those are the kinds of perks I'm talking about. And of course, that's all very well and good you know, for those to be really, really powerful, because obviously they are the final level, but obviously you know my, you know my opinion on, on the perks. Some of the perks are completely useless, and I, I feel, I, I just question why they are even there, you know, that kind of thing, but, well, if that's, if that's the way they want to do it, then that's the way they want to do it. I have no, no problems with them. I'm just saying that, uh, some of the perks that we can currently get are quite lackluster, in their fun factor, if you know what I mean. Because usually you want to have a lot of fun whenever you level up and whenever you have the ability to select a perk. You want to be like, wow, this is crazy. I have two incredible choices right here. And instead, some of the time you have the, well, the choice between something bad and something slightly less bad, you know. So that's, um, eh, you know, I mean, it's still early access. So you never know what's going to happen. Maybe they're going to do something about that. I have to be really careful here. I'm just going to block downwards. Generally, that's usually what uh, spearmen are going to do every single time. Thankfully, there aren't too many one-handed weapon users or two-handed weapon users or anything like that. So we don't have to worry about it in the least. But hopefully, I am going to be able to survive this battle.
You know, it's actually probably one of those times where I should stay out of the way and then just allow my forces to do the uh, little speed up thing because I generally think that I am not really going to be that useful anymore. I only have 21 HP, so obviously... Oh, never mind, never mind. Okay, there you go. We actually got them to flee. I did take 18 uh, overall casualties, which is actually not even that bad if you think about it because I do need to continue recruiting units as well. And speaking of that, I did just, just before I started the episode, recruit another companion. I actually didn't recruit another companion. I found an old companion and I've given him a party of his very own and now he's running around and doing whatever he wants to do and hopefully he, that's going to result in us having a wonderful, wonderful little, um, little smattering of units in his army and hopefully he's going to return to us with decent units and then we'll be in a very nice situation. Okay, do I have a herd problem right now? No, it doesn't seem like I have a herd problem right now. Even though I have a massive amount of horses in my inventory, I would have expected myself to have like some kind of penalty at this point. But no, there you go. Okay, so this is where we currently are. As you can see, we've taken Kesar Castle. I actually wanted to try and take Baltacand if I could. But, um, well, I'm not entirely sure why my forces are ignoring Baltacand, and that kind of makes me think, hey, maybe there's a bit of a problem there. Maybe they have a lot of units in the garrison or something like that. And so that's the reason why I'm being a little bit cautious, a little bit skeptical about it, and uh, maybe we should go over there and scout, because it might make sense anyway, because there are a number of castles over there that I might like to take as it is. There's another 80,000, actually 100,000 total from just selling our our uh, various, you know, pieces of loot, and of course our prisoners too. Now, the one problem that I'm going to foresee is if I do attempt... Ah, hello, there is actually another army here. But yes, I'm going to help the uh, the vassal here, but yes, anyway. If I do attempt to do any kind of siege, we're going to go in for an auto-resolve here. That should be easy enough for us to do. There we go. And we're just going to let these people go once again. And we might have some friends actually coming up. We might actually be able to speak to a couple of people, and they might have positive relation with us as a result of that and uh, we'll just take all the loot once again okay so apart from this let's just go and scout Baltacan real quick and we'll see what's going on there is another army here might want to tackle that army straight away yeah as you can see they have a pretty significant garrison but I don't think it's going to be anything too dramatic I'm, I'm not entirely sure why um who is that army that has a huge amount of people? I'm actually not entirely sure. I'm going to have to look at that. Uh, okay, so she's actually not uh, part of anyone. Uh, I mean, she's not the, the head of the clan or anything like that, so we don't really need to worry about it. But we do need to let her go. You know, that's always a good idea, I guess. And otherwise, uh, 11,000. Don't really care about 11,000 experience. That's kind of negligible at this point. I think that generally if we are able to gain 50,000 experience or around that number, if we don't need anything else, you know, if we don't need money or whatever, then that is going to be the way to go. Anyway, I'm going to go into Makeb right here and I need to resolve the ownership situation. Let's give this to Yorig. Uh, I'd like to try and increase the territory that some of the other vassals have. So, for example, Yorig obviously is the owner of Varnovapol, if I'm correct about that. And I want him to be able to have the ability to come over here and have forces available for him if he wants them, you know, at his disposal, basically. Because otherwise, if we don't have anything like that for him here and he gets defeated or something, then he's going to go all the way back to Varnovapol, and that's going to be very, very far away, and that's obviously not something that we really want to have for him. So once again, I'm, I'm going to give him a town. I'm going to give him all these things. He is a pretty decent vassal, so I'm, I'm kind of happy to give these things to him, and I'm going to try and take Baltacand, I suppose. I mean, this is not something that I really want to do, generally. I, I don't really like being forced into this kind of situation but it is kind of necessary i think i mean generally look at this we've just taken amprila right so amprila is right here Melodia has dedicated his army to taking amprila rather than taking baltacand which i think is I, I don't even know what he's doing to be honest i don't know what's going through his head this at this moment in time because i think to myself baltacand is such a no-brainer it is just such a no-brainer because the kuzate have nothing else. 
They have nothing else at all. And it just makes so much sense for us to eliminate them or to attempt to eliminate them as best we can. Kanojan might actually be willing to listen to me right now because he I just I've just seen him and he is not in an army. So I might be able to speak to him. I'm actually gonna leave the siege so that I can speak to him straight away. And then we can try and Yes, here we go. Okay. We might be able to persuade him. And I'm not entirely sure. Does he own Baltacant? I don't think he does. But if he does, that's fantastic. But I don't think he does. So we don't really need to worry about him so much. And now we have a decent amount of cash. So I, sh I should be able to give him... Wow, he really doesn't even require that much. Okay, fantastic. There you go. And they have now joined. They have now joined our faction. Yeah, he did not have this. So Baltacand is obviously Monchug um, controlled. Oh no, it's Ilatar. Ilatar controlled. Very interesting. Okay, let's uh, send a messenger to Ilatar then. I think I've seen him around as well. Yes, indeed I have. And uh, let's take a look. Hello there. You're not part of an army either, sir. He only has five positive relation with us, so he might be a little bit difficult to persuade. But I'm going to try my best and we'll see. No, never mind. He was really easy to persuade, actually. Look at that. Two 100% critical successes. And let's have a look. Yeah, he requires quite a lot more, but in my opinion, this is going to be worth it, because that means I don't even have to bother taking Baltacand, because he joins us straight away, just like that. Boom. Done. There you go. Fantastic. So now, I am going to go over to the Diplomacy screen, we're going to go over to the Kuzate, and I'm going to force through the peace agreement. That is going to cost me 1,300 influence, which is obviously something that I'm not that big a fan of, but we are going to get a tribute as a result of this. And that's all that I really care about, you know. Additional cash for, for my people, that's all good. I mean, look at the Vlandians. They they made a pact with us that is worth 2,200 every single day. Pretty crazy, right? Yeah, pretty crazy. Anyway, let's have a look and see what else we can do here. So we're being offensive against the Northern Empire. Obviously, there's no point in being offensive against Sturgia or Batania because they don't have anything. And there you go. Look at that. We've now taken the Kuz 8. And we've completely destroyed them, basically. So now what I need to do is take a look at some things. So let's have a look. All right. So I'm going to... I'm. Should I speak to Disporion? I mean, he was... Oh, no, he's the ruler. <laughs> okay, never mind, never mind. He's the ruler. Okay, yes, let's not do that then. Let's not speak to the ruler. I mean, personally, I feel like it would be really cool if we would have the opportunity to, um, you know, form some kind of deal or maybe some kind of diplomatic alliance that kind of forces or allows uh, another ruler to join your faction. I think that would be kind of cool. Maybe like a merging. A merging of factions would be really, really fun. But obviously that is... Probably not going to happen, but, you know, it's something to think about, nevertheless. Okay, so, are we at war against the Azurai? We're not at war against the Azurai, right? No, no, we're not. Okay, okay. So, we're only at war against the Northern Empire right now, and everyone else is basically a non-factor. So, let me speak to Vipon. And is he in an army? Yes, he is. Of course he is. Okay, so, before we go anywhere else, let's just go to Baltacand, because I do need to recruit some... Never mind. I was actually hoping to recruit some troops. Let's actually just take a quick look. Ah, they have 52,000 in here. This is pretty good. I'm going to sell all this, and then we're going to recruit a couple more units, and then we'll go on to the next siege, whatever it may be. All right, so a quick update on Tile and what we've currently been doing. So, yeah, you can see here, look at the uh, look at the combat strength. Let's see how long this actually takes in real time. I'm actually not entirely sure what the... Uh, <sighs> what the timer is on right now i mean the duration of the video but let's let's just take a quick look at this so i'm gonna start now let's do this fast forward mode and i've taken a note how long this is going to take i estimate less than 30 seconds what do you bet less than 30 seconds to do this i think so it's it's so far been 15 and that's it yes it's now been 20 seconds since i said now okay so there you go <laughs> 
Ah, that is, uh, that is incredibly amusing, I have to say. Very, very amusing. Okay, we were able to take that. And, uh, yeah, I did not realize that Tile was so incredibly weakly defended. I really have no idea what is even going on here, to be honest. But there you go. I believe it was probably taken by another faction from whoever, from the Sturgeons to the Cusade, or from the Cusade to someone else. And as a result, it is now completely and utterly undefended basically and Urix Kala castle as you can see right there is also under siege I've already taken Dinar castle and given it to uh, Kanujan because obviously he is a new vassal and he needs as many as many fiefs as he can get his hands on because that is obviously going to increase his prosperity overall ah now this might be a little bit of a problem yes they have 362 it seems like Vladiv castle has been basically passed over from person to person to person and there has never been a siege here it has already just passed hands so many times but none of them were due to a siege so that is going to be kind of interesting to see so let's do that let's do that and see what's going on and uh, bear in mind that the, the northern empire is dwindling right now their territory is dwindling at such a dramatic pace because we are literally able to do these kinds of sieges where we can literally just go in and take something with such minimal effort and i'm not even doing anything for these you know that because i went into dinar castle and i was like oh okay let's have a look at and you know what their garrison's like and everything i took a look at their composition and they had about 160 units in there and i thought wow okay what are we going to do with this well, not much, because they just literally folded before us like, I don't know, a wet paper towel or something. Yes, that's basically how how quick that was. It was very, very simple. So those are the kinds of sieges that we are probably going to see for the majority, and that's also the reason why it is quite simple in the late game to progress. And it's actually quite weird as well, because you think to yourself, okay, wait a minute. Late game, you know, late game's going to be pretty tricky, right? Late game's going to be uh, much more difficult than you would anticipate because obviously it's late in the game, right? Everyone's going to have really high tier units. Everyone's going to be ready for a fight and so on and so forth. But that is actually not how it goes some of the time in Bannerlord. It very much depends, of course, on which faction you're fighting. But if you kind of stay out of the way, like we have in this series so far, it really makes a huge difference to the overall strength of the other factions. Because if you think about what I actually did in this series, what did I do? Well, I just basically faction hopped as a mercenary over to different people. Different factions, different people, different territory, and so on. And that's literally all I did. And what, what, is that, what has that created? Well, that has created a bunch of mediocre and very normalized factions they don't have anything special about them whatsoever their combat strength their territory size nothing and that indeed is probably the secret to being able to achieve victory without too many too many difficulties because you basically just allow enemies to fight each other you allow enemies to fight each other through sieges of course through sieges because if if they're you know fighting through diplomacy or something along those lines then that's obviously not really going to make that big of a difference because diplomacy as i've just demonstrated with vladiv castle right here it basically doesn't make any difference they they just keep the garrison and everything is normalized from that perspective you know instead of sieging something and then ha literally having all of the garrison be refreshed that is usually not how it works with diplomacy. So, you know, when, when diplomacy happens, the garrison just switches owner over to someone else. And so that's the reason why diplomacy in general is one of the strongest ways to gain territory as well. So that's the reason why I've always said that everything has a price, which is the highest level, um, highest level trade perk, is very effective because you literally can trade and bargain with fiefs themselves and if you have a huge amount of money which you probably should at that point in the game i mean don't take this particular campaign as a as an example because i haven't really done very well here in regards to my own money situation what is going on here though 
Oh, I should probably help them out, shouldn't I? Yes, I should probably help them out. Okay, let's go in here. Um, but yes, I usually, at this point in the game, have so much cash that I don't know what to do with it. And this is obviously a a bit of a, a bit of an exception in this campaign because we I think we had just way too many garrisons, way too many garrisons with way too high high tier troops in those in those garrisons. But yes, if you if you have everything has a price, you're going to be able to do an extremely good job. Oh, look at that. Civil War is broken out in Batania. Well, that doesn't really do much because they don't have anything. That's kind of amusing or I, I don't think they have anything anyway. But yeah, everything has a price. With money, you're going to be gaining so much combat strength every single deal you do that that is, that is probably the key to having the strongest faction in the shortest amount of time. So if you want to speed run or you want to challenge yourself with conquering Calradia in under a certain amount of days or whatever, then generally the best way to do that is through everything. Everything has a price. And uh, that's not... Yeah, I mean, that's the thing. That's not strictly true um, from some perspectives, because if you think about it, you do need to have decent relation and a decent charm skill and a decent trade skill uh, to be able to make that work. Because if you don't have relation with the vassal, then they're most likely not even going to speak to you. If you have negative relation with them, for example, they're probably going to say something like, I would prefer not to speak on this matter with you. You scoundrel. I mean, they're not going to say you scoundrel, but they're going to say something to that effect, and then you're going to basically be like, oh, well, that's kind of sad. And yeah, so that that's, that's basically how it's going to go if you are not careful. That's the reason why generally, even in a trading campaign, I've, I, I do have a trading campaign, by the way, it's called um, Trader Lord Pelasaur or something along those lines. So if you want to check that out, there is a playlist in the description. I, I think you've you, you've probably already seen it, to be fair. But generally, if you haven't seen it, I'd highly recommend it. It does show the, the power of everything has a price. But bear in mind that this was on a few game versions behind this one. And the persuasion system has undergone various changes since then. And um, yeah, a bunch of other bunch of other changes have also been made and of course I was using different mods then as well because I was going for very much trader based mods to um, to make trading just that much more fun and uh, generally more usable as well but yeah that um, that is definitely something to think about because as I say if you are able that's why I've actually been trying to persuade these people to join me because for example that guy that had Baltacand what was his name again Ilatar right Ilatar yeah, that guy, literally him joining us with a garrison of 500 or 600 units, that basically gave us what? Uh, what was his army size? I don't even know what his army size was, but that, that gives us about 700, maybe 800 combat strength just because he joined us with that garrison. And that means everything. That basically means everything. Combat strength means everything in this game. And uh, I'm going to die. Am I? If I die here, this is going to be embarrassing. I should run, actually. Yeah, that's also something you should bear in mind. If you run forward, you're obviously going to run much faster than if you backpedal. So it's usually a good idea to turn around, run away, and then turn around again if you want to use your throne weapons or something like that. I do want to try and escape from the situation, though, if at all possible. Can you get out of my way, please? Thank you. Thank you very much. What, what, what was that? Did you see that? That was an absolutely pitiful throw. There we are. Nice. Nice. I still think these javelins should be able to penetrate multiple enemies. I mean, considering the amount of force that I'm literally throwing it with. But I assume that as soon as I hit someone and kill them with it their ragdoll or body or corpse or whatever you want to call it ceases to have ki any kind of collision so that probably makes a difference as well anyway there you go we did end up taking Epinoza castle and we are now going to auto resolve oh yes i actually need to do this so let's just give that real quick to kenujan and i want to make sure that he is pretty happy because i'm pr i i think he's a good vassal i think he's a good vassal so I'd like to make sure that he's uh, he's doing okay. 
We're going to just take the remaining little bit of uh, prisoners right there. Don't really care about 5,000 experience. I'd much rather have the money at this point. Let's decline this for the moment too. And let's take a look at the map because I believe that Mysea has actually just been taken. Oh, hello there. Two armies. Two armies in the area. Very interesting to see them so close by. Are you actually going to attempt to take this? No, they are not attempting to take this. That is very interesting. Okay, so let's have a look. What else is happening here? There is another vote for Mysea. As I said before, they have actually taken that. They want to give this to me. Uh, I don't really want it. So I'm actually going to give it to Ilatar because he only has one thing. And while it may be a town, I think it makes more sense for us to give him that than for us to take it. And as you can see, look at that. We've kind of split the Northern Empire's territory in half. They still have Argaron as one of their towns, but otherwise, apart from that, they have nothing. They just have Gauss Castle, uh, Zhogorys Castle, and Sirotos Castle, as well as Lokhana, and that's it. That's all they have. So, yeah. Then it's just the Azurai and Vlandia and a couple of fiefs from the Southern Empire, but they're really not going to be that difficult to deal with. So we should be absolutely fine. Let's take a look at Sturgia's combat strength, actually. They still have 6,000. Azurai have 7,000, Southern Empire 3,000, and so on and so forth. So, yeah, Batania has zero. <laughs> They're basically done. They are basically done. They should be eliminated from the game, in my opinion, but I'm not entirely sure if that is even in the game any further, that particular game mechanic or whatever. But otherwise, yeah, my plan going forward, well, what it is right now is because the series is no doubt inevitably coming to a close relatively soon in the next episode or two, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take every single Empire fief. I'm going to take uh, the Northern Empire and the Southern Empire. We'll declare war against the Southern Empire to be able to do that, I suppose. And then we will, yeah, probably in what, as I say, in one or two episodes, we'll dedicate one episode to the Azurai, and then we'll dedicate one episode to the Vlandians, and then, and then that will be it, and then we will own the entirety of the map. What do you say? Do you like that plan? I hope you do. Anyway, I thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.